Ah, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics Guy. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit headache grower. Today, high class growers, we're going to be talking a little bit about the initial startup of the aquaponics system and the feeding rate for your plant production area, right? We're going to jump right into that. So before we get into that, I want to thank you guys out there for liking the video, subscribing to the channel. The Aquaponic God appreciates every last one of you guys out there, right? So let's jump right into it right now and get the yapping. All right, so this question here comes from one of the members in Aquaponics Paradise. Faraz, what's going on, my man? Um, he says, if the tilapia will not eat according to the ratio, then will it not affect the other ratios? Now, this question here is a, um, or the prelude to this question is we're talking about, as I said, the initial startup of the aquaponic system. When you just put those small fish in there, your fingerling or your juvenile fish, are they going to be able to eat enough to supply the plant production area? Right? So that's what we're going to jump into. Now, we're going to bring out the Aquaponics Guy whiteboard, but um, to kind of break this down, because what you're going to understand is that when you're doing aquaponics and you, you, know, you set it up initially, you're going to have to wait a certain period for your fish to develop to a certain age and a certain size for them to be able to consume enough feed to support your uh, plant production area. So it is a little bit of a wait. There's certain ways that you can kind of cut it down, but um, you know, if you're just doing it standard, then there's gonna be some type of wait. So let's jump into it and let's give an example of, uh, of a wait time and kind of what you can expect when you slap it together, right? So let's jump into it right now. All right, so let's get to it. So pretty much what we're gonna break down is we're gonna, I'm gonna provide an example of kind of the wait time you can expect for um, you know, your tilapia to be able to grow to a certain size to be able to consume enough feed to support the entire plant production area. So I'm gonna give you just an example, pretty much kind of based off of what we got back here. Um, and so you'll be able to see you know, what it kind of looks like you know, when, you're, when you're putting it together. So let's say we have an eight by eight um, uh, floating raft system, right? Eight by eight, that's 64 square feet. Now, what we want to do is convert this square feet into square meters. These are, this is what we're going to be working with. So to do that, you take your square feet and you divide it by 10.764. And when you do that, that's going to give us 5.9 square meters. Now, it's going to be about 5.94, but we're, we're going to round, right? So 5.9 square meters. In this example, what we're going to be doing is growing bib lettuce, right? We're going to be growing the bib lettuce. Now, when you read the literature from Dr. James Ricasi in the University of Virgin Islands, this is like the staple crop that they use to kind of figure out the, the feeding rate um, for a floating raft system. This was one of them that they use. And what they found is that to raise bib or to grow bib lettuce, it's going to require 60 grams of feed for every square meter of plant production area supplied per day. So 60 grams per square meter. So we need 60 grams supplied to every square meter. And in this instance, we have 5.9 square meters. So when you multiply 5.9 times 60 grams, that's gonna require 354 grams of feed per day right? 354 grams of feed per day. So this is the plant production area right here. We know what now what we need in order to raise bib lettuce. And let me um, keep this in mind for you guys that this is going off of a staggered production, meaning we're um, not stocking everything or planting all of our, our crops at one time. You have one section that you uh, plant, then you may wait a week or two weeks, then plant another section. Then wait another week or two weeks, plant another section called succession planning, right? Or just staggered production. Let me see, where's my pen at? Okay, I got my marker here, right? So that's what this is uh, um, based off of. If, I, if you were to raise a batch culture 
all of these, you know, if you rate to raise all of these together here, and this is a top view for you guys to get an, uh, to get a better understanding. This is just a top view of it. These are my, my bib lettuce. Don't worry about it. Right? If you were to raise all these together at one time, the nutrient demand is going to be different. Right? It's going to require more nutrients to support this because once these all raise to maturity, they're going to demand a lot of nutrients. Right? They're going to demand a lot of nutrients and this here most likely is not going to be able to support that. So this would be higher. The feeding rate would be higher during a batch culture. You would do a batch culture if you're doing something like uh, fruiting crops, tomatoes and cucumbers, peppers, things like that, it will work better. But other than that, if you're doing leafy greens, you're more than likely going to want to do some type of staggered production or succession uh, planning. Right, so now we have our plant production area figured out. We need to come over here and figure out the fish uh, portion of it because that's what's going to be supporting this. This is pretty much what we use to support and grow this. So we need to now come back and kind of like reverse engineer it to figure out what we need and how long it's going to take for us to be able to get fish to a certain size in order to eat this much feed to grow you know, this much, uh, this much plants, you know, this many plants here, or this much space of plants, right? So these here, we're going to be using these as an example. Uh, these are tanks that could hold 100 gallons of water, right? That doesn't mean that they're 100 gallon tanks. It just means that they can hold 100 gallons of water. So that means it could be anything below here could be 100, and this could be just free, uh, free board space, the, the, the top area up here. That's just free space, and down below is uh, holding at least 100 gallons of water, right? What we, our goal is we want to stock um, these tanks with um, male tilapia, and we want to grow them out. And they don't have to be male tilapia, but for, for this example, it's going to be male tilapia. We want to grow them out to be half pound per gallon in here, right? That's kind of our goal. So when we stock our um, tank initially we're going to stock with 50 gram fingerlings male tilapia right 50 gram male tilapia now let's kind of make our little tilapia here here's our little our little tilapia right now when you stock these in here and we're going to stock 49 of them times 49 right 49 of them now when you stock these in here 49 that's not going to be there's not going to be enough fish in here that weigh enough to be able to consume 354 grams of feed. That's just not going to happen with, you know, with these numbers here. But what can happen is what we can do is we can predict that after a 12 weeks time that these fish, if they're fed appropriately and all the water quality is up to par, right? That means the water temperature is up to par. Um, the dissolved oxygen is up to par, at least four to six parts per million. The water temperature is, you know, uh, fairly decent around, let's say somewhere around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's around like 27 Celsius. That we can predict that, you know, that these can grow to around 300 grams after about 12 weeks. Ideally, to get them to grow the fastest, you'll want them to, to be grown at about 86 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about uh, 30 degrees Celsius. But since we're kind of factoring in the plants, they don't really like the, the root temperatures to be that high. 80 degrees, you know, 77 degrees Fahrenheit, I think that's 25 Celsius. You know, we can get around this range. So after 12 weeks, we can, have, we can predict that we can have an average tilapia weight of about 300 grams. We went from 50 to 300 grams, right? So now we have a total weight in this fish tank, fish tank one, we're not stocking fish tank two yet, so fish tank one, we have a total weight in here of 14,700 grams of fish, right? That breaks down to 14.7 uh, kilograms. So when we have, um, and the way we get this is we have 300, this is the average fish weight times the number of fish we have in there. We have 49 fish in there. Right, we stock 49 fish in there. So that's going to give us this weight. Now, for the feed, the, the, the amount that we feed, 
pretty much when you have tilapia over about 100 grams, you pretty much go down to about 2% body weight. So 2% of the body weight is what's going to give you a good ideal estimate on what you can what you should feed that fish or those fish. Right? So we have 14,700 grams right here at 2% 2% body weight, my marker's going out, 2% body weight, that's going to be 294 grams right here. 294 grams is what this tank will be fed after 12 weeks, right? Now, what do we need? We need 354 grams, right? We need 354 grams. So this is taking a nice chunk out of that requirement there. So we still need uh, about 60 grams left. But this is where tank two comes in here. So now we're at 12 weeks of waiting. And just at 12, uh, uh, 12 weeks, we now stock tank two. And my marker is gone. But it's okay. We'll still get the last piece of it. Tank two in there with what? The same thing. Male tilapia. Right? Those are going up there. 50 grams. And we're going to put 49 of them in there. Right? 49 of them in there. So when you do the math, or when you uh, figure out the total weight of this tank, right when we put it in there, right when we put them in there, that's going to give us 2,450 grams of fish weight. Oh, I done messed that up. Right, we have 50 grams that we stocked them in there. There's 49 of them in there. That's 2,000. When you multiply those two together, that gives you 2,450 grams, right, of fish weight. Now, since these are a little bit smaller, their 50 gram fish, we feed them a little bit higher, right? The percentage is a little bit higher. It's around 4%, right? You can feed them around 4%. So we have our, our um, total weight, 2,450 grams at 4%, feeding at 4% body weight, that's 74 grams right there, right? So now when we combine tank one and tank two together, Let's see if we can do the quick math on that. Hope this, see if we got it. <laughs> we don't even have enough on here. Hopefully you guys can kind of see this. That's 200 and, oh, 294. Let me see if I can do this. We're struggling here. It's all right. 294 for tank one, plus that 74 for tank two. That's going to be eight. Nine plus seven, 16. Carry to one, 368 grams now after, you know, after 12 weeks of waiting. So we had to wait just about 12 weeks in order to get our fish to a big enough size to give us, you know, that feed that we wanted right here to supply this plant production area. So 12 weeks under ideal circumstances and ideal conditions is what you can expect for this type of setup here. A two tank setup, you know, it'll, it'll be different for four tanks and stuff like that. It'll be slightly different, but this is what you can expect off of that, right? So this is a breakdown of it, but you do have to wait. We're dealing with living organisms here, right? The fish have to grow. We can't just, you know, vamoosh and make them, you know, make them pop up in here, um, you know, and grow just as fast as we want them to grow. And we can't throw as much feed as we want in there. They're not going to eat it all. It depends on the size. Right, so hopefully this gives you an understanding on that and anyone else out there. Let's see what else we got on the question here. What else do we got? Let's see what else you have on here. It says, let me move this out of the way real quick. You guys can see it. See it, let me get ready to move it out of the way. All right, bam, what else do we have? It says, are there any different feeding ratios for fingerling and grown fish? So yeah, that's what we just talked about. If you're talking about a feeding ratio for the plant production, the plant production is still going to be the same, right? But we have to, we feed differently uh, depending on the weight of the fish, right? If you have a fish that's between five and 50 grams, um, it's going to require a higher um, a protein percentage, right? So we're going to be feeding somewhere around 35 to 40% protein. So that's going to be one of the ways that it differs the, the, the feeding ratio between a juvenile fish and an adult fish, right? Another thing that's different is the amount of times that you feed, 
right? When you have smaller fish, you're going to be feeding more often. As they start to grow a little bit bigger, then you're going to be feeding less, right? So that's, those are some of the ways that it differs between the fingerling and the, uh, the more mature fish. Now, one thing that we have to understand is that we're not going to be stocking. I, I'm pretty sure you know this already because you've already taken the course, but we're not going to be stocking the fingerling in our main uh, production area. Right, that's going to be for our, you know, getting to 50 gram fish and pretty much higher. You can do a little bit less, 35 grams, but I prefer around somewhere around 50 grams. Right, stock them in there at that weight, and then from there on out, we can pretty much, um, you know, um, they can pretty much be raised in there and use the space effectively. So let's see what else you have in here. Uh, it says and. What will be the effect on the nutrient supply? I think you're referring, yeah, you're referring to from the feeding ratios for the fingerling and the mature and the adult fish. Well, when you, when you, um, pretty much when you grow at that, or when you use that higher protein percentage, what that's going to do is that's going to create more nitrogen in your system. That protein breaks down the nitrogen, right? First in the form of ammonia, and then obviously we know that gets converted to nitrite and then nitrate. That's going to be more present in the system as you, you know, as you're, if you're raising smaller fish, the fingerling fish, and you're feeding at that higher protein percentage. So when we start getting above, you know, 100 grams, or pretty much when we get above 50 grams, 50, above a 50 gram fish, that's when we pretty much bring the protein down to between 28 and around 36 percent. Wherever you can find you know, whatever you can find, if you can find, you know, a 32%, that's what I use, a 32% protein feed, then by all means, that's what, that's what you get. You, if, if you have access to a 36%, then that's what you get. 28%, that's what you get, right? That's what you can get and provide your, um, your fish with. But the, pretty much the main difference is, like I said, it's going to be the ammonia production or, or the nitrogen production that's going to be in your system. That's how the nutrients are going to be affected. Right? So let me see if there's anything else on here. Nope, that's it. So hopefully this has helped you out and has cleared up some of the stuff for uh, a lot of you guys out there who've been wondering the same thing about the initial, you know, uh, establishment of the aquaponic system and when kind of you can get all the feed in there to supply the plant production area because it does not happen right away. So this is a very, very good question. A very good question. And it's going to vary depending on you know the size of your system depending on how many tanks you use depending on the fish species that you use some grow at different rates right it's, it's gonna vary right but this is just an example for you guys out there so hopefully this has helped you guys out if you guys have any other questions you know be sure to submit them in the comment section below and then we'll add it to the queue and we'll get this thing rocking if you want more information on aquaponics Make sure to go to the schoolofaquaponics.com, get in the aquaponics paradise, right? And get get uh, familiar with the fundamentals. Because that's what you're that's gonna be your uh, pretty much your rock right there. That's gonna be your foundation. Right? Get in there and learn that. Right? So I want to thank you guys once again for liking the video and subscribing to the channel, man. I appreciate you guys out there. You guys are a tremendous help. And you guys are just a, you know, a tremendous portion of the team that we got at the School of Aquaponics. So I appreciate you guys out there, right? This is hot stuff, right? So with that being said, I'm going to conclude right now. This is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics reminding you to stop walking and get you a car. <laughs>